you know, I really feel for Soggy right now, but yeah, just like just super happy it's not me. And, you know, to pick up a win on like, you know, the best, you know, supposedly the best players in Asia, like, yeah, means a lot. Oh, and another Belcher, <laughs> just to add the cherry on top yeah. of this delicious cake called Victory. And Milhouse Panastorm. <laughs> All right, well, Soggy goes ahead and taps out, and that's Naviut surviving another day. He's gonna go for it. Stink master time. Stink master time. He's got it at the Asari. He's got it oh, turned into a 1 1. Here we Does go. He's he do it, not Mason? happy with it. And oh, it turns no! his new wreck into a squirrel. And that is going to be oh, it. Ping Ping Ho. Man. He can destroy that beast damage. too. Oh, it's but. easy, lethal man. When that fatigue comes in, that's gonna be it. Ping Ping Ho has won this match in a thrilling 3 2 victory. Matoon's a great player and his lineup matches up really well against mine, so yeah, just I don't know. This is Marok. Matoon's really hard to read, just he's really calm, um, pretty collected, like laser focused, like he has a great poker face. I'm pretty glad I picked up a win for you guys and didn't go to uh, and yeah, yeah, you guys cheering me on definitely makes it worthwhile, so yeah. You know, I don't really speak much Japanese. D2, of course, does, but I understood what he meant when with blah, blah, blah. I really get it. <laughs> Murloc Paladin seems to be a source of comfort for Matsun. Now that he's beaten uh, Naviut before and we have a rematch, we'll see whether or not he can keep up the momentum and fight for Japan, or will Australian player come all the way from the lower bracket for the top four? Welcome back, everybody, to the desk of the Winter Championship for the Asia Pacific region. My name is Frode, and I'm joined by D2, our expert re resident from Japan. How are you enjoying the tournament so so far, man, now we're going to day number three. It's been really good for me, honestly. I like casting all these control matches. I mean, a lot of people do the resident sleeper, but I really enjoy them. There's a lot of things to think about. I think the better player usually wins in those matchups, so it's really exciting for me. Oh, I think it's uh, incredibly exciting to be able to watch some of these matchups go really fast, like those aggro shaman decks, uh, the druids. However, we also see these murloc paladins and control <laughs> warriors. I'm really looking forward to it. I just want to remind you guys one more time, another thing you can look forward to besides the upcoming matches is the fact that we'll be unveiling a new card from Whispers of the Old Gods expansion before the final match, not right now. It'll be coming soon, though. So just stay tuned throughout the broadcast. You don't want to miss it. While you're out there and you guys are watching, whether at home or maybe you are on your way to work and you're just waking up, make sure to hashtag on social media HCT and vote who you think will win between Matsun and Naviut. We do know a lot of people have been putting their votes in for Naviut, but Matsun has also been winning the hearts of fans, especially when you see the story of how his family's been supporting him. His daughter has been drawing on his shirts, <laughs> sending him her powers. Uh, I mean, I really hope that uh, whoever wins here can really continue to get a lot of the support because I think both stories are really great. Absolutely. Both of these players very strong. Kind of unfortunate that they're both in the same group and have to play each other twice, actually. And uh, yeah, on Monsoon's shirt had the, the Murloc there. Also had the target dummy. Interestingly enough, it's what he mentioned to me. So maybe, maybe some interesting tech. His his daughter Perhaps. likes a target dummy, you know? You gotta, you sure. gotta run with it. <laughs> I love hitting memes that don't hit me back, too. That's it being the case. <laughs> Let's go ahead and meet our players. Our first one hailing from Australia. It's Navi. Yeah, Navi is a very accomplished player. Obviously, like we mentioned in an earlier broadcast, 10 top 100 finishes over the course of his, you know, playing on NA ladder. And obviously, bring a lot of control lineups. Not too happy with his decision, probably with going with the Freeze Mage. But if he can get past this matchup, you know, he can probably do well in the semifinals on. It's elimination match as well. Definitely wants to get the important win. Says that he doesn't feel favored against Matsun. But he'll just play his best and forget the rest. Let's meet our second player hailing from Japan. It's Matsun. Matsun, like you mentioned, from Japan, a heartbreaking match yesterday against Ping Ping Ho, but looking to avenge that today by defeating Naviut and making it to the semifinals. We know his daughters are rooting from rooting him on from Japan right now, as we see the well played. Unfortunately, no daughter made shirt today. Yeah, he's not wearing any shirt that his family has made from them. Uh, he's instead wearing some Hearthstone stuff, so maybe maybe it's a time to get more serious. He's <laughs> playing around with his opponents a little bit. 
But in the end, whether it's superstition, whether it's the fact that he just needs some fresh laundry, <laughs> I think Matson is dialed in, ready to go in his comfort zone. Yeah, didn't want to tire out his daughter. Daughter made so many shirts for him. <laughs> it's like a you mini know. sweatshop at his home. He's like, keep <laughs> making shirts or else I won't win. Try to get his newborn to make, maybe make a, a shirt for him, and she just, oh, you know, man. cried and didn't work out. Oh, uh, well. Uh, I think it's adorable, as much <laughs> as we're joking around. I think it's really great that uh, a lot of people have been supporting Matsun, none more than his own family, his own wife and child. Uh, now I think we take an opportunity to look at the polls and see what you guys have been voting for. You've seen their interviews. Uh, you've seen their faces. Oh. It looks like Matsun has won the people over for now. I mean, Navi has a lot of the players on his side. You're looking at the people who practice it with him in the mm. West, even players in Australia like Flamingo Buns, uh, well, another prominent Bums. player. <laughs> Did, did, I, did I say buns? Buns. Flamingo buns are good, too. I mean, okay. pretty much the same, same uh, meaning. It, it's but. great uh, on the burger <laughs> that I had for lunch today. That's kind of what I Absolutely. had on my mind. <laughs> and taking a look at the matchup, uh, sorry, on the lineups, it doesn't surprise me at all that Druid's banned on both sides. It seems like Navyut, uh, both of his series so far, he's been banning Druid. So has Matson. When you have decks like the Mal oh, sorry, when you have decks like the Warrior and the Murloc Paladin, it's really important to ban that Druid on Matson's side as well. So I'm looking forward to see what these guys got because we, we're in for a lot of control games here, D2. Yeah, absolutely. And the Druid ban is interesting because we saw Ping Ping Ho kind of switch it up yesterday and ban the Murloc Paladin. In, but both of these players have been Druid every single time, so it's obviously you know something they plan coming into this. No Savage or North Force in Nature's. Instead, we <laughs> have a lot and a lot, a lot of combo damage coming in from all of these decks. We're talking about Maligos Warlock, OTK Warlock. We're talking about Freeze Mage, as well as anything can happen. Let's see what goes happen. Well, let's see what happens. Excuse me. In game number one, Ooh. Paladin versus the Warrior. We've seen this a couple times from both sides. Has your opinion changed at all, D2, no. now that we've seen more of the deck lists? I, or of this particular matchup? Uh, yes, of, of Paladin versus Warrior. Uh, not really. I mean, I mentioned yesterday on the cast, I got some people disagreeing with me, that I believe that now this matchup is very even. It used to be considered very favored for the Murloc Paladin, but Warriors have start to figure out how to win and how you win is you basically get your justicar earlier you mulligan for that you gain a lot of you basically tank up as much as possible you get to the 70s in health and then once the first anything can happen you brawl it you put a belter out and then from there they can't do the damage absolutely i think one thing that you mentioned that's super crucial is that they learn how to play the matchup nothing particularly changed to dramatically shift in terms of tech it's not like they put in Harrison Jones, and all of a sudden they're good against Warriors. Some decks do have that simplicity, like better against Freeze Mage with Kazan Mystic. Mm. But in this case, uh, Warrior just figured out how to play a little bit more mm. proactively. And you know what? I actually have a game plan and a strategy. Before, it's like, just please don't kill me. Please don't <laughs> exactly, kill me. Yeah. I'm dead. Yeah, and or, or you got the other side of it, right? It's like, how can I deal with this? The double anything can happen. They're going to draw it, so let me get aggressive. It's like, no, getting aggressive as, you know, <laughs> this sort of control deck against the Murloc Paladin with all of that healing doesn't really work too much. Sure. Now, Matson has a half, like a hybrid version of this Murloc Paladin. Sometimes we see a more board-centric version with Muster for Battle and Minibot, which he does have. But we haven't seen cards like Dr. Boom come out of him, which is something that King Ping Ho has brought to the mm -hmm. tournament. Uh, so it seems somewhere in between the Sogi deck list that he brought, which right. is much more removal focused, versus uh, Ping Ping Ho's version, which is much more minion and board centric. Right. Sogi also had two heal bots, which is interesting because sometimes that can be a dead card if you're really hyper focused on removing the board. But yeah, this matchup has gotten off pretty interestingly. I would say that Navi would r likes where he is right now, is able to get multiple draws off of that Acolyte of Pain. And deciding what to do here. As Navi, you want to take as little damage as possible. Even, you know, throwing your face, even using a weapon on a minion, sometimes that can mean the difference between winning and losing. So if you're Navi, you just want to take as little damage as possible. And that's why, you know, you want to be aggressive with getting your minions on the board to have that minion combat. Yep, uh, I like that Navi stopped and thought about the opportunity of developing a big game hunter just for board tempo. But I think he realizes that even getting the early armor ups can be pretty crucial. And right now, even if you played Big Game Hunter, you're feeding directly into the board. Uh, you know, the fact is, it gets answered just by the four power that's represented. So I think he says it's not accomplishing much. Yeah, even Consecration. I mean, you yeah, think true. of like Consecration, like, oh, that's fine. You know, it's not, you're not really killing much. But there's not many great opportunities for the Paladin anyway. And I'm pretty sure that Monson would have taken that opportunity had he had the Consecration in hand. Now Matson has a, a two choose over champions. I'm looking at one of them to come out this turn, even though he overrides the Light's Justice. 
the three damage on the weapon, sure, you like to get it out, but I think it's more important that you're playing mana efficient and uh, making sure, more importantly, to deny this Acolyte from drawing two extra cards. Yeah, just absolutely. Just one more. And even just killing off your own board. There's a revenge, by the way. I was going to say, because even if Navibut has revenge in his hand, you kind of don't want to use it unless your opponent commits even more to the board. But I think Navibut, with not much else to do, will probably use it this turn. Yeah, what I do like about revenge, too, is that it allows you to squeeze in the armor ups. We, we've been seeing the the warrior survive with somewhere between 5 to 10 health, which is not that much. You might feel like that's a dramatic shift, but the reality is, in the final stages of the game, not only is the Murloc Paladin going to be pressuring you with anything can happen, but you have to make sure just not to die. And the best that the Murloc Paladin can do is shave the armor accounts in the early stages of the game. Absolutely. And for Matsun here, he can play the Lothab. Lothab is not something typically seen in Morlock Paladin. Maybe a Nartward Freeze Mage that we saw the other day. But, uh, I mean, there's not there's not a you know, set of rules for when you play Lothab against Warrior, right? It's usually just annoying for them. Perhaps you could prevent mm -hmm. a Brawl or something like that. But mm -hmm. for Matsun here, it's really annoying to deal with the slow step, so I wouldn't mind him just dropping it down right here. Yeah, there. I mean, the only turns that I personally care about um, Dropping Lothab against Warrior is on turn five because you're playing it on curve. Right. Shield slams and execute cost six. Mm. Also on turn nine because Brawl costs ten. So you're, you're pretty much hit the nail on the head. It's like those two maybe, but even then, yeah, yeah, exactly. it still <laughs> takes all of like the Warrior's turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and they're more minion and weapon based anyway, so they can play around Lothab easily. Ooh, so interesting. Maybe Matsun was going to play that Lothab all along, was just considering whether or not he wanted to use his True Silver there because his next turn might just be True Silver Hero Power. So that's kind of an interesting, you know, extra line. Oh. Extra, ooh, and there's the Harrison Jones. That's would have been pretty nice there for Navio to get that charge off of the True Silver Champion. He can play the Sudge Vulture, but again, this is why you like to play Lothal on Curb sometimes, because, you know, you expect the Sun Vulture sometimes. I wonder if he feels like playing Big Game Hunter is the huh. same as playing the the Sludge Belcher. Both just get eaten up by Lothab. But right. in this uh, case, you're not giving up Belcher because you have the Belcher Brawl strategy. Right, 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 right. That is definitely true. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, Belcher just dies too easily here. We saw a situation yesterday where Monsoon played the Belcher because he just needed something on the board and didn't have as many cards as Naviut, but I definitely agree with you there. The Belcher, you'd rather, even if your, your, uh, Bel excuse me, your Big Game Hunter gets eaten up here, you're still kind of better with that yep. than having, not having the Sludge Belcher for the future. Plus, how many targets does Big Game Hunter have in this deck if you know your opponent's not playing <laughs> Dr. Boom? Uh, usually it's targeting an old Murkai, <laughs> exactly. and you're dead anyways. Yeah, you're going to brawl that. You're not yeah. going to, let's uh, BGH this and then brawl. No, it's not typically happening. Well, um, Matsun back in the same position of does he want to develop that true silver champion. He does have an alternative play by using six mana through the, Mur the Murloc War Leader, the Zombie Chow, the Hero Power, and then he can get trade value off the Lothab. So th th there are multiple ways that he can set this up. I also right. don't really mind if he kills off the the big game hunter and draw with the Solemn Vigil. I actually don't mind that at all. Hmm. He's just going to go with the Solemn Vigil right off the bat and play that Zombie Chow. I mean, you might not get a chance to use your Solemn Vigil for very cheap against the Warrior anyway. So it makes sense in a way. And maybe you want to draw into other options in the future. Because now, I mean, everything that Matsun is trying to do here isn't very powerful. So he's thinking, eh, maybe you should get more power in the future. Yeah, the only thing that I'm scared about is something that allows the big game Ooh. hunter to get value. Just got True Heart coming into the hand is really nice as well. Very nice card to pick up there. That's basically what he needs. He needs yep. to just start taking up as much as possible and get out of range. And he just kind of owned the board right now. He's saying just using all his removal, getting rid of the board from Matsun. And the thing is, for Matsun's side, I was going to mention this, but Matsun. He knows that Naviut can never use Brawl until the Anyfin, so that's one advantage for him. But Naviut's saying, you know what, I'm going to be proactive, I'm going to take care of all the meanness beforehand, and make sure that I have a board present so I don't have to be in a situation where I feel like I need to use Brawl. Yeah, that, that was the big reason why I'm in favor of removing the Big Game Hunter, just in case Warrior uses some of its single target removal mm -hmm. to start just picking apart your board. I wasn't even thinking about Slam, for example. It's like a Bash Shield Slam with an armor up is, is enough right. to remove everything very efficiently. And so Mat Matsun, in this situation, now he's kind of like, do I play a little bit off curve and play True Silver Champion? Am I just going to give up the Blue Gear Warrior and then develop with one mana floating over? It's, it's a lot of questions that he has to balance. And the most important thing is that Monson's also dead on the draws. He has nothing that helps dig yeah. deeper to the deck, which is going to be very painful when Navi starts taking the board with Dr. Booms, Justicar, Trueheart, and Shield Maiden.
Yeah, absolutely. So for Matsun, exactly, and if he picks up a Lay on Hands here, then you know, playing this anti kill bot, basically you're taking away the healing power from that Lay on Hands. I'm wondering whether yeah, he plays the heal bot out here. I was wondering whether he should just play the War Leader and Blue Guild the face, maybe, because he just saw some <laughs> removal. I mean. D2, I like it, man. I mean, he's <laughs> taking the damage, especially with the, the, the people's champion, Blue Guild Warrior. <laughs> I don't mind. But uh, in this situation, I, I definitely can't fault Monsoon for feeling like mana efficiency is really important. Ooh. However, the play in general is just weak. And you look at Monsoon, the fact that he can't really develop things like True Silver Champion reliably, even now, True Silver is a little bit awkward. If you play the... You, you want to be able to, like, True Silver, Blue Guild Warrior into Dr. Boom and then play, like, a little bit more efficiently, but he didn't put this weapon up ahead of time. And of course, we also know that Navi has the Harrison Jones waiting the moment True Silver number two comes out. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And the thing is, we've been talking this entire time about, you know, Navi strategy. He plays defensive the entire time, but looking at Navi hand, it's all minions. Maybe he could just beat Monsoon down. This may be one of those rare opportunities that you see. All right. Well, uh, he does have a card draw source. It's not exactly the most reliable. All right, here the Murloc comes down. Murlocs come down, excuse me. Are we all going to go face here? Looks like it's all going face. Yeah, he says, I can't deal with this, you deal with it. <laughs> Which and sometimes is, is a completely valid strategy. Yeah, absolutely. He has the Consecration in hand, so maybe he just wants to get more value out of it. And, I mean, Navi is pointing this Dr. Boom to Acolyte of Pain, and Monsoon's only going to pick one draw off of it. But, I mean, you're preventing seven damage. And there's Leon Hands, by the way. Land hands, a very important card. Looks like Navu gets to snipe on both of the Murlocs. Wow. Really big. If Monson ended up drawing another Murloc that had charge through the Mur old Murk guy, he might have been able to remove Dr. Boom. In this case, he would have. And now, Monson, do you take this opportunity to draw cards? You probably have to address the board a little bit. That's 13 damage <laughs> represented right there. Yeah, I think you definitely have to deal with the board right now. One thing in Monsoon's favor, though, is if he can somehow pick up the second anything can happen. You know, a lot of times people say you have to draw all pieces of the combo because if Warrior is around the 50 health range, then you have to have, you know, the first anything for 22 and the second for a lot of damage. But if Monsoon can maybe play a decent amount of stuff and then just get an okay anything, maybe he can just kill if he finds that opportunity. Sure, I'm down. Monsoon develops a choose over champion, which will make him feel pretty safe until he realizes... Where is this going? Where this True Silver Champion is going. Okay. <laughs> straight to the museum. Navi's going to be pretty happy to see this result. Specifically because that's the second True Silver. So now he doesn't have to worry about additional bursts. Ooh, that is really good for Navi to pick up here. Now he can you know, kill two of these minions and tank up at the same time, which is crucial for him. And Monsoon really doesn't... Oh, and to the face. I like it from Naviut here. So Monsoon's under pressure, and it's hard to be under such pressure and still be able to, you know, develop or basically draw into your deck. Well, I, you know, I was saying if you didn't draw a quality, you could have laid on hands into a quality. Yeah. But there it is. Completely valid uh, play here. And, you know, in the end, as much as Naviut tries to be aggressive, the reality is <laughs> he can also uh, drag this game out for a long time. Absolutely. And I think equality has to be used here, unfortunately, for Monsoon. I mean, I say unfortunately, but you are getting rid of two big creatures here. It's still a reasonable amount of damage. If you think about it, uh, it was 10 he health total. What do you think about that? He just hits the face with his bluegill. I can take the, hit. the thing is, I think now that he has a Consecration, he's not afraid of taking a little bit of damage with mm -hmm. a second Lay on Hands right. also. So... He knows Navid wants to build the armor count, so that was a really intelligent attack by Monson to get two extra damage that he might have not, he might not have if he was just trading. Yeah, absolutely. Really high level play here, not just going for the autopilot, you know, just clearing the board there, mm -hmm. realizing he can sneak a bit of damage in. And for Monson, just lay on hands again, I think. Yeah, probably his hands not looking very good. We were talking about how Sludge Belchers just get eaten up by five fives. That is the magic number. And Monson picks up the second war leader, so all he needs is his old Murkai, and he'll have all five Murlocs assembled. And Monson's realizing that Naviud's kind of loath to use his face on some of these minions, so he kind of expects that this 5 5 is going into it, and that, yep. you know, turns into a concentration target. Kind of. I mean, it's, it's in the end, it, the father <laughs> 5 5 doesn't die, but he can at least use the Peacekeeper with the consecration. And now that he has anything can happen, I think development of the Murloc Warleader isn't bad either. 
However, uh, I'm also thinking about when on earth can you play Solemn Vigil for anything less than four or, 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 or even five. Mm, and right. it's something to consider as well moving forward. So if he does end up playing, well, in this case, he's playing double Peacekeeper. Yeah, just putting as much stuff on the board as possible, even going with the Morlock War Leader. And again, this is just recognition from Mavu, not excuse me, from Matsu, and realizing that Navio doesn't want to use his face on any of this stuff. And, you know, Navi is kind of preparing for that any fan can happen as well. He wants to be able to have a weapon in hand so that he can brawl, take out the last minion, and then have the Belcher in front of it. Sure. And so, yeah, Matsun saying, okay, I'm going to force you to use your removal or your face here. Navi does have ways to, uh, to defend himself. He has Death Lord. That's kind of the main card I'm looking at revolving this play around. Shield Slam isn't also too bad here. So that, I mean, it's pretty convenient. You have Death Lord, Shield Slam, which leaves you six mana to play at least Star Seeker and Hero Power. Does he end up swinging with a weapon to protect his Death Lord even further? You've seen inequality. You don't. You know that there's no Keeper of Oldemons in uh, Monson's deck. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling like it's pretty decent play because there's no true silver champion either. So Death Lord should be protected. Right. I think right now, Mots, or excuse me, Navi is roping because he's counting the damage from potential a couple of anything coming out right here. So he's probably thinking exactly what you're thinking. Is it better to kill us off now? Uh, do I play the Death Lord? And he's roping, but I think he's going to get this off. Probably Shield Slam. Reequip weapon. Okay. So okay. Yeah, he definitely he values reequipping the weapon because he wants to be able to brawl and then Sludge Belcher and maybe brawl and then Death Lord afterwards. Ah, that's a really good point. Uh, Death Lord being used because he doesn't have the second Belcher might be just as important, if not more. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a really good observation, D2. Matson. Well, picks up zombie chat, which isn't exactly uh, conducive. Uh, How would I like to give my opponent five health with this minion? <laughs> I think he was really upset of drawing that card. Yeah, that's basically the anti-pressure play, right? Sure, <laughs> just sure. Like, Let me just help heal you up there, friend. Well, you can Consecrate here and draw a couple cards with Solemn Vigil. It should be worth only two mana if you end up trading the Peacekeeper, or three if you kill off the Shield Maiden number two. Right. Would you go with the Sludge Belcher instead, though? You maybe go for the full Mana Solemn Vigil, go with the Sludge Belcher, and then your Consecrations are even better from there. And on top of that, you have Consecrations for future turns. But it looks like he is reaching Let for that Consecration, me. like you mentioned. Get rid of a lot of this board. I guess he doesn't really need the Belcher, if you think about it. There's no real pressure developed by the Warrior. Warrior's game plan is very, very simple. It's to oh. survive. He's going to do it beforehand. I guess he has no intentions of playing that Zombie Chow. And there's the Keeper okay. of Aldemon, actually. So. Looks like we just haven't seen too much of the uh -huh. deck list so far. Yeah, I think uh, I think Matson realizes that uh, he missed a mana, but in the end, just for sym symmetry, why not do it like that? <laughs> Navi climbing up to 45, and once again, a really strong grasp of this matchup and how to play it. Was that old Murkai? No, that was a mini bot. Shield mini bot. Shield mini bot. Mini bot's actually pretty annoying here. So for Monster, he could go for a quality consecrate, go for the shield mini bot afterward, and also use a hero power, and then he could use his keeper of Aldemon to push more damage afterward. Oh, I apologize. We haven't actually have seen keeper of Aldemon. I was going off the assumption that it wasn't there, oh, and so now with keeper of Aldemon, that makes uh, a lot of ability to neuter any threat that comes out from Warrior. But however, it's not like Monson's loading up with a lot of threats. Just got a mini bot and hero power. Just tank up alone, out heals it. Yeah, both of these players are on pins and needles, by the way, because Monsoon's saying, how can I get enough damage? And Navi is saying, is this mini bot going to be the difference between me living and dying right now? And do I have to play a taunt? So very tough decisions for both of these players. I mean, a mini bot and a silver hand recruit has never been more scary. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it's still relatively innocuous. Navi saying he doesn't want to take any damage though, so he's like, do I really have to play this Death Lord? I want to save it, but I think he's gonna to have to play one of these taunts here. Right, Matson has Keeper of Voldemort on the other way on the other side too, so he has to not only play Death Lord, but he also swing at the one one. Yes, to exactly. stop it. Because what he might unknowingly do is uh draw old Murkai out. Well there's the second <laughs> any fin and it well, the old Murkai is the last card in the deck then, huh? Yeah, so it's just going to be pulled out right here. And charging the face as well. And gets the Beltra on board. Again, Matsu knows that Naviut is not allowed to use Brawl, so can, he can just throw that Beltra on the field. So this is card number 27. And he's just not going to play that Zombie Chow. Map to the Golden Monkey. Naviut is still searching for another answer. Bash, Bash is, is pretty decent. Yeah, pretty good here. It helps him gain some life, and more importantly, he can execute off of it and finally have an activator. He definitely doesn't want to brawl before he ends up 
Um, is there any way to use Brawl? I guess he's not going to go for that, but maybe you could use Brawl now and then use Bash plus Execute to kill off the first Anyfin, save the second Brawl for the second Anyfin, and then... Because the first Anyfin is not going to kill you, right? So even if you're... You basically have to wait for the second Anyfin to get the damage in any way. Oh, wait, wait. Ah, he didn't even get all the Murlocs. Uh, all right, whatever. He just goes so, for it. So Monsoon doesn't want to fatigue every single turn. I think with Navi, it's tank up every single turn. What Monsoon's saying here is that I just don't want to die to fatigue, which could actually happen with the amount of damage. He didn't have enough he's, damage. He's at 27 health. The fact is, Navi, <laughs> he can still pressure with just a hero power alone, and Navi still has to address the board. And now I think he might have given a small window, although maybe you're right. Maybe Navi was at too, uh, too low of a health count for it to be relevant. Yeah, but we'll have to see here. And the Bluga Warrior comes up, which is pretty good for Navi. Let's see if he, he... Last time he didn't kill it, but looks like he's going to kill it now. You know, here's another problem, too. Less Chargers died and more War Leaders survived. So he could <laughs> hypothetically be in that same exact scenario. But let's find out. I mean, anything can happen can be super strong. <laughs> what? That... He only got three Chargers. That's not enough. Navi just died enough. again. Yeah, the that's... War Leaders, they survived. <laughs> Their greatest it, even nemesis. Even the shield block, yeah, Navi is going to win this one. Monsoon is not happy about that. Four war leaders has once again compromised <laughs> his paladin from taking the game. Monsoon is crushed, and that's going to wow. wrap it up. Navi takes yet another warrior versus paladin game. Well, I mean, he's proving my point, right? Warrior can win this matchup a good amount of time when you know exactly your game plan and you execute it the way that Navi has done. He is delighted, to say the least, and very much relieved. If you look at uh, Naviut, he said he didn't feel confident against Matsu's lineup, but getting that Warrior win right off the bat is pretty good, because now he can use things like his Freeze Mage, potentially, to win against the Murloc Paladin. Yeah, I think absolutely. he was really worried about the Freeze Mage, because he knows that there's cards like Lotheb, uh, there's cards like even Kazan Mystic, mm -hmm. that's teched all throughout the lineup that would really shut him down. Right, well... Naviut in his second match yesterday, or in his second match overall, which was played yesterday, he went with the Freeze Mage, just kind of throwing it away against the Warrior because he needed to pick up a win with it versus the other decks. But looks like he's changing up his strategy against Monsoon. Didn't want to have that auto loss at the beginning if that came up. So basically trying to pick up a win with his other decks. Doesn't want to fall in a hole like he did the first time. Do you feel like a, a sense of, you know, a, a fellow Jap Japanese pride that Matson's playing? Because it looked like you were not entertained by the four Murloc War Leaders coming out of the second anything can happen. I have to say, I mean, Hearthstone hasn't been too big in Japan. It really blew up after the Japanese client came out in October, and there's so much support. It's really hard for me not to, you know, root for him. Obviously, Navi is a great player as well. I won't be too sad if he moves on because, you know, it's just amazing to see the great players that you know move on and prove themselves at the same time. But I can't really hide my bias right here. It's just, it's just that it happened twice. <laughs> Someone has to calculate the, the percentages. I'm gonna look at Robert Wing right now. <laughs> what, he's he's over there. He visited us. Big shout out to him, community guy from uh, from Team Five. What are the chances of the four war leaders coming out with all the permutations of different Murlocs happening? Because you know, everything died twice, and then that happening two times. Specifically in the Control Warrior versus the Murloc Paladin. This is an absurd championship finals. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen in game number 2D2. I'm happy that you transitioned out of that. I didn't want you to make me do cast math right there. Make me do no, the I odds. Wouldn't do, I wouldn't wish that I put my worst enemy. In fact, uh, I believe I would not do go after my my worst enemy's family or friends or anything. I just make them get on a caster desk and try to do Hearthstone. <laughs> it's like, get, get out here with me. Make you do the crazy math that can sometimes be in this game. But here we have a matchup that we did not see the last time between these two players, and that is the Control Warrior from Matsun versus the OTK-style Renalog from Naviut. And this is a matchup that's definitely favored for the Warrior. Yep, this is a deck that Naviut has concealed from Matsun. Last time they met, Naviut lost one to three. Uh, Matsun was able to uh, take out the Freeze Mage a bunch of times and then put himself in a, a very favorable position. Ultimately, Naviut resulted to Warrior uh, and never played the Warlock. Right. Yesterday, we even were thinking like, oh, it's probably just Reno Warlock, Reno Warlock. Oh, he has an Arcane uh, Faceless Manipulator combination attack. And uh, that ended up giving Naviut the surprise win and honestly, the boost to win the series. So how does it happen in round two? Do you think Naviut uh, has, like, what does he need to do to be able to win this this game even though you feel like he's the underdog? 
Basically, you just pressure the board with minions. If you play too slowly, the Monsoon's going to remove everything and basically just tank up out of range. For Navi, he needs to get that chip damage in as, lo as much as possible. And you're going to have to hope that your opponent's around the 20 health range so you can pull out that Arcane Golem Faces combo. Well, cards like Acidic Swamp, who certainly help in this matchup. It's not a bad thing. We'll see if Matsun is able to answer the threats, because right now he does have situational removal. Weapons are pretty good. Cards like Big Game Hunter will always have value against a, a, a Reno Jackson-style Warlock deck. But for now, um, we're, we're still kind of just waiting. You know, I, I think everyone's really gravitating towards this removal form of Warrior. And there are ways for it for shenanigans to get out of hand too. Also, there's ways that you can just win. Let's say Mutsun plays the Death Lord, and then all of a sudden Face Manipulator is pulled out. And it's like, well, I just lost half my damage. <laughs> <laughs> We've had awkward situations like that happen in the past. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that Mutsun is actually playing Death Lord. However, he's basically playing a more draw focus style of Elise Warrior, basically trying to get to the Gold Monkey as quickly as possible. I don't recall seeing it. So uh, that's Death Lord yesterday. So it was there from Pink Bing Home. You do recall correctly with the um, the cards like Battle Rage. Right. I mean, that was a really interesting card too because Battle Rage usually fits in decks like the Patriot Warrior. Right. Um, however, it's not really that common in Control Warrior. And in the end, we saw Matson playing Control Warrior Mirrors and playing Battle Rage willingly for four or five cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just so he can get his Golden Monkey exactly. and fall short because of Tink Master over Spark. I know. It was a great night, DT. It, it, <laughs> it was pretty entertaining. You see, Navi really just wants to get something on the board here. Doesn't want to use Lothop until he... Basically, this is the this is the strategy we saw from Matsun against Ping Ping Ho yesterday, right? So Navi could play the Lothop here, but... He's considering just waiting until his board is full and catching Matsun getting greedy, getting, you know, trying to go for a greedy brawl and then using the Lothab and getting a lot of damage in that way. It's true. Lothab has much better timings than turn five with nothing on board. However, what it does do is, first of all, Matsun's been passing a lot. He actually hero powered three times. Actually, if you look at the match history bar, D2, literally nothing has <laughs> happened aside from this low peb except using your hero power. So he says maybe his hand is full of spells or unusable cards. Mm -hmm. I can get this low peb in for 5, maybe even 10, 15 damage if he can't respond to it. Yeah, it looks and like that it. might be able to reduce the life to the point where I might be able to combo my opponent. Wow, Matsun's going to hit the face here, it looks like. Or maybe get to work on the low peb. Okay, I mean, he has... Bash as well, so maybe he feels really confident. Huh. Oh, Arcane Golem getting reduced just a little bit means that uh, he's just going to be able to put out that combo a little bit faster, and the pressure is is on. I mean, you look at the fact that Navi got nine cards worth of mana right now uh, is a huge deal. So Matson's going to have to figure out not only is how you're going to remove it, but how is he going to remove it efficiently without giving up too much life. Yeah, so last turn, Matson didn't play the Despite, and part of that was getting extra armor, and part of that was... If you ran into the Lothab and then Navi didn't play anything, then, you know, Monsoon basically had to run to it again, which would be unfortunate. Or, I mean, obviously, to hit the face in that situation. Mm -hmm. But instead, he went for the Fire War which was expecting to hit the Lothab, but he didn't. He just went to the face. But he doesn't have actually have any removal in hand to use anyway. If you use the Brawl right now, that might be something he regrets later. So, not, Monsoon's kind of put him in a tough spot just by his own, you know, decisions here. Yep, and you know, Matsun's also in this position that's really awkward, where because Lothep was played very aggressively, Navi's gonna sneak in even more damage, and more threats are piling up. Dr. Boom coming out here on this turn, how do you deal with it? The, the, the reality <laughs> is, I think this is a really, uh, you know, under, very subtle play of like playing the Lothep on curve. It might seem extremely obvious and very like, you know, not, nothing too fancy, but if it can keep getting damage in turn by turn, it might be one of the secret MVPs of taking this game from Navi. Definitely. And exactly, on five mana, you know, like you mentioned earlier, Warrior cannot deal with it. As we see Monsoon pick up that Battle Rage. Yikes. <laughs> he doesn't need cards. He's got a lot, of, he's got a full hand. And yet, he doesn't have Execute. He, he needs, he has an Activator, of course. If he had Execute, the, the play was perfect. Revenge, Death Spite. Execute, and then you'd be able to knock out Lothab. You'd be able to do everything. He's even using Brawl to go for a, a, a kill on one minion. This is equivalent to like a five-minute deadly shot. 
basically what it is. And you see from Matsun, I mean, it's gotten a bit pretty desperate here, right? He doesn't want to be taking this much damage. He's actually kind of okay with this, even though it's a bit harder to kill because four damage is less than five. And if he's going to be attacking, getting attacked so often, then, you know, it's a bit better. I was okay with playing just a Kartru Heart there as well. I feel like even if your opponent Dark Bombs, the reality is you just need to do something. And if your opponent's going to be playing more minions next turn, you can Brawl. Naviud also seeing one Brawl, realizing, okay, well, his hand is very awkward for removal, so he's just going to press his advantage. And Matsun is losing ground extremely quickly. Uh, Death Spite number two is not going to improve it that much. But he can go for a Death Spite and then coin out his Sludge Belcher this turn. Which right. looks probably the most appetizing play. Yeah, I don't think he's going to use his second Brawl anytime soon. Probably going to go for what you mentioned, or maybe a Gromish here. Just to have something on the board. That would be pretty painful against the BGH. Even the Siphon Soul could be used here from Navi, would be, I mean, to be honest, because... I mean, what else are you going to use on this matchup? Well, the reality is, you do know that this deck has... You, it usually has cards like a, mountain, a Molten Giant. Dr. Boom. Uh, we know that Fugan and Stalag aren't in it, but you know, even even in these connect these cases, there usually is a way you can remove it. And I think now that you've parted ways with Brawl, it's even more important to keep Big Game Hunter because if they play Dr. Boom, you probably don't want to use second Brawl because then they're free to develop as much as you want. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, Naviut, he's going to go with Jaraxxus here, it looks like. And this is something I wasn't expecting at all, to be honest. And this completely changes. I mean, we kind of missed that a bit there, but... The, the reason why the Control Warrior is usually favored is because usually when you're facing an OTK-style Reno Lock, you know, you're basically relying on that damage from Navi to get in, mm -hmm. to basically win bit in the game. But mm -hmm. if you already have the Jaraxxus, then actually this kind of changes our analysis and flips it on its head. Yeah, and I was thinking of if he wanted to go for Jaraxxus. I wasn't sure if he was or wasn't, but he had the option of playing that with the Ooze and then shut down the entire board, getting a, a huge proactive board. But I do also like the idea of slow playing it. You know, the fact that you can get Jaraxxus behind taunts is a huge deal. Navi is even debating whether or not he wants to extend any further out. He's even mortal coiling his own Ooze because he knows his opponent's struggling with the removal. But I don't mind playing it slow here. It's like... I think uh, even though Navi looks like he's pretty unhappy with how that turn ended up going, he ended up just using three out of his nine mana crystals. Mm. It's still okay. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, is Naviut was thinking about what to do there, and he decided, you know, instead of thinking about, well, there's an explosive sheep. That's karma! He got it <laughs> yesterday. Naviut realizes he did the exact same move uh, on poor Sogi <laughs> yesterday when he was getting an optimal explosive sheep. Yeah, I don't think this is as impactful as yesterday. I still think Naviut's in the great spot. Again, I this is something I really have to reiterate, is that I mentioned that Control Warrior is a pretty heavy favorite. Now that we've seen Jaraxxus, it's actually the opposite. So... Yeah, Draxus feels like a really good w alternative win condition if you can't use uh, Arcane Golem, Power Volving Faces Manipulator, which still might realistically be a way to finish this game if you're just looking at the, the pace of it. Warrior's not running away with health. It doesn't have the board. In fact, it's using it's leveraging a lot of its health in order to uh, in order to control the state of the board. Oh, that's interesting. He's not attacking with the Death Spite either, so that means Sludge Belcher gets better too. Definitely so. Mm. And, I mean, Naviut, honestly, he can do whatever he wants here. One thing, I was going to mention last turn that Naviut, he was deciding whether or not he wanted to play something, but this is one of those things that experienced players kind of know to do, right? They they know, like, the worst case scenario for each of their turns. They don't want to do the worst thing, even if they're kind of flustered in certain spots. Sure. So Naviut said that, you know, the worst thing I can do, I don't know if this is better, I have to consider all the possibilities, but if I don't do anything this turn, it's better than if I overcommit to the board. And it was really nice restraint for me. He's like, uh, I, well, I might as well just not do anything here. There is the man whose life's mission is to get rich. <laughs> Reno Jackson comes into the hand, but rea realistically, maybe Navi never really needs Reno Jackson. Yeah. Because when you, I mean, when if you can get a taunt down safely, let's say Matsun doesn't kill the Sludge Belcher this turn, then you can play Jaraxxus. And you can even hear a power behind it. Yeah, absolutely. That's insane. That's the thing. I mean, some... In these control matchups, it's not that weak of a move just to get a 6-6 six, six onto the board and to develop Jaraxxus and get that 6-6 six, six at the same time, it's pretty insane. It's not just 6-6, six, six, it's 6-6 six, six for 2 mana. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of upside. Yeah, that's well, that's what I'm saying, right? Because usually, I mean, say you're just playing control versus control. There's a lot of you know passing back and forth. If you just play six sure. six, that's a kind of a strong turn in and of itself. But you're developing directions and you get that six six on the field. It's pretty insane. Looks like we have just a car coming down wow. for a mod soon. And are we just gonna see that Drexus slam on the field? Hurt yourself for eleven is a pretty good turn, honestly. Yeah. In the situation, he's holding a silver platter, saying, "If you have Draxes, go for it." Will he attack? Is the question. Actually, oh, yeah. that's a really clever. That's a really good question. Wait, Mot Navio saw Motsun's entire deck. Is there Harrison in that deck? As far as what we've seen through the deck list that we have in front of us, uh, and we only got cards that were revealed on the broadcast, mm -hmm. there isn't an Harrison Jones. But he chooses to hold it anyways because we haven't seen every card. So we haven't. Uh, it did go to fatigue for Motsun. No, so we haven't seen every card in this game so far. So right now he. he knows that there is a possibility of Harrison Jones still being played. Okay. What well, now? in any case, Navi in a good position regardless. It's not like he needs that face damage from his weapon in order to kill off Matsun. This Draxus yeah. have come down very, very quickly. So it's not like, I mean, sometimes you need the face damage because you're starting fatigue. Sometimes that mm -hmm. this matchup gets to that point. But Navi sitting pretty comfortably here. If he ever gets low, he can heal up with the Siphon Soul or the Reno Jackson. He has tons to spare. He can make six sixes every single turn. Navi is, uh, you know, assuming to not like this pose because he doesn't know how to get this get out of this he's got to get he's got to get working i think his best case would be to shield slam the sludge belcher so that way he can start threatening with the gromish hell scream his only win is through being able to use grom to finish up this game however Naviut has more taunts he's got defender of argus sun free protector but he also has kazan <laughs> mystic kazan mystic yeah. the mvp so I would expect Navier to play as defensively as possible. You're in an extremely advantageous position right now with these 6-6s six coming out every single turn. Just put up a taunt. You know, don't even have to uh, to play too much into Brawl, honestly. And on top of that, you you know there's only one Brawl left. So basically, just make some 6-6s, six put some taunts up. You're not going to die. Even right now, he's not going to die to Grom Bash because obviously Matsun doesn't have enough mana for that. And, mm -hmm. you know, typically you don't run the... The cruel taskmaster, either. Usually not in this deck, uh, so I think he feels really safe. Void Walker also isn't irrelevant. I think the the abusive sergeant adds more potential damage to finish the game um, with the arcane golem. I think if he chooses to be aggressive or defensive, he still feels like he's in a really good spot. Hmm. That's kind of interesting wow. to me because he didn't attack the face earlier because he was worried about Harrison, which we don't believe is in the deck. And yet he decided not to play a taunt here, even though and that's basically saying you don't have abusive sergeant. Even though you yeah, know you don't have cool taskmaster, you oh, don't sorry. have a way to buff your Gromish Hell Scream. I know what you mean. Cool man. taskmaster. You don't have any way to actually guarantee that you win next turn. So he's saying I'm going to force out brawl before I have to use Sun Fury Protector. Hmm. This was a very calculated risk that he knows that there's almost zero percent chance of it backfiring, right. assuming. Nothing crazy happened, and Matsun all of a sudden whipped out something that's not expected. However, with cards like as the Star Seeker, I mean, it's not impossible for Matsun to have some really crazy results. I, I mean, I'm talking about like a Lee Star Seeker. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? Going to the Golden Monkey, gets a Nefarian, into something <laughs> like a sacrificial pact, and end the game. I'm just putting it out there. Right. I mean, honestly, I don't think Navi is going to put himself in a position to die to Grom at all. I mean, looking at his hand, so... Yeah. Ooh, the it, bash to I face agree. to set up next turn. And Navi is... Navi knows what this means. He knows that Grom is in the hand, and he's just going to heal or taunt or both. I think taunt is probably his, his best bet here. Um, and then he knows that his opponent just has to deal with the pressure. So if you just hero power and Sun Fury Protector... <laughs> He can Hero Power, Sun Fury Protector, and Siphon Soul, his Sun Fury Protector. I didn't even need to do that. Just to be super safe. Just to be oh, super safe. <laughs> but, but the thing is, how do you how do you get past two waves of taunts? Yeah, if he has Gromish two executes, he has to have another like cool Taskmaster, which he draws off the top. The thing is, he's seen... Navi has seen two brawls by now, so you can just throw stuff onto the board and be perfectly safe here. Yep. And there's a Dr. Boom coming out. This looks pretty bad for Matsum. And I was about to mention earlier when you talked about the Lilies, obviously there's the chance of Nefarian into that sacrificial pact, but 
Having played this matchup, even if you get yeah. if you get the Golden Monkey out at the same time as Raxus, I mean the two two the the two mana six six are just too efficient. Your legendaries just don't keep up. D two, I'm trying to find a single ray of sunshine <laughs> in the cloudy tempest that is Matsun's mind right now, because I think he just keeps looking at how depressing the situation is. <sighs> Unless and this Beacon Hunter can BGH the entire board of Navius. <laughs> And then deal a lot of damage to face too. I just, uh, it's hard to see here. We'll see. I mean, he's trying to draw. Maybe he can get executes, stabilize the board a little bit. It's going to be tough. Matsun looks pretty defeated. Execute number one has been drawn. Well, I mean, it's a pretty good outcome. Well, hey, revenge and execute helps control study the board. You can even battle rage for more cards. Right, so what is the play here then? You go for Battle Rage and then BGH, and then you have five mana left. Or excuse me, you have two mana left. And then from there, you could Revenge, you could also Execute. Revenge might be saved for that Grom. Revenge lets you draw another card, I suppose, but so does b b that Battle Rage. Revenge does clear the 6-1, and then it helps you clear the state of the board. I think he doesn't really care too much about drawing as much as he does about surviving. He's really worried his opponent might die. He knows he plays the Arcane Golem, so he says if he keeps too much minion pressure on board, I just lose. I just don't to a know. certain extent, he's right. I just don't know what the win condition here for is for Munson at this point. I know. <laughs> yeah, right, but that would involve playing Elise already. Right, right. Un unless it's like a gra like a huge mistake of epic proportions where Navi doesn't taunt or heal this turn, because not Masu can of course slam his own Gromish yeah, to, exactly. for lethal. But Naviut's definitely not going to misstep here. And the very fact that he's attacking with his face here means I think Naviut's going to go with that Reno here. I mean, there might be some crazy combination with which, you know, Matsun finds lethal, something that he hasn't even thought of before. Wow, that feeling when Reno Jackson is not even as good as a heal bot, but I guess <laughs> the 4-6 the is one of his most impressive stat lines in the entire hand outside of Molten Giant. So I like it. Plus, I think he's calculating how much damage he has for lethal next turn with Arcane Golem, Abuse of Sergeant, Dark Bomb as 9 damage. You can even squeeze in the uh, Defender of Argus, so that's 11 from the hand alone, assuming you have board presence to, to finish the game. Alright, well Monsoon's gonna go digging here, gonna find some more card draw, but not gonna really help. I mean, we're just kind of sitting here looking at Monsoon, you know, play this out and... I. Again, I just can't see anything. He's drowning. The, the reality is, Monsoon, I think, is still trying to figure out a way he can win. But the fact that he's not even dropping the Elite Star Seeker makes me think that he, well, here, he, he believes he has another answer in his deck. Well, now he's dropping it. I think what he was trying to do is find some sort of damage in his deck. Because he felt like going the Legendary route was not going to work for him. So that's why sure. he was drawing without dropping the Elite first. But now that he sees that Navi's back at 15 health, then you know now he's just going to go for the Legendary route. Six on board, plus the three is nine. Arcane Golem, Power Overwhelming, Abuse Sergeant, Dark Bomb is 13. So that's that's uh, 22 plus a Defender of Argus, 24. A little bit short. I don't even know if he has enough mana to do it all. He probably does. So Navi can't win just yet, but he's getting closer. And I think the, the fact that he has like Defender of Argus, he can just Inferno again, still feeling really safe. Right, and he's already seen BG, so he can definitely just, you know, beef up that Inferno. Not really a too big of a deal there. Mm -hmm. Maybe Matsun also really wants to get into Harrison Jones or whatever he has in this deck. I'm telling you, man, maybe if he had a chance to get the Golden Monkey and do something, but it looks pretty unlikely. He might have to even use Gromish for removal. Slam, gonna have to pick up something huge here. Like Deathwing? <laughs> Even Deathwing. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's it. Well, Death was part of the equation, D2, and that's going to be a 2 0 lead for our Australian player. One yeah. game away from moving on to the top four. Matsun's life is on the line in this tournament. Yeah, slow, painful death there for Matsun. Very well played by Navi Ut. Sukensing out those cards, starting with the Lothab, putting pressure on Matsun there. And Navi was basically really, you know, pessimistic about his chances against Matsun. He was saying that if I can get past Matsun, I can maybe do something in the semifinals. But, I mean, right now he's doing great. He's one game away from making it out here. You know, the reality is, though, uh, Navi said that he was worried about his Freeze Mage. So if mm -hmm. he's worried about his Freeze Mage, the other two decks, they actually end up winning. So maybe ended up turning out okay. We don't know how it ends up being. And 
Maybe uh, Naviut is finally starting to calm down and realize that he's one step closer to advancing to the top four, who'll be taking on Handsome Guy. Let's head over to Doa, by the way, who's standing by with Handsome Guy to see what he's thinking about the series and ultimately who he wants to play. That's right. Thanks, Frodan. I'm here with Handsome Guy. And Handsome Guy, it's been a good tournament for you so far. You've been doing well. Uh, some people would say you're playing better than you ever have before. Uh, what's the secret? What do you think is helping you play so well this weekend? 지금 더 이상 굉장히 좋은 성과를 보여주고 계시는데요. 혹시 그 비결이 무엇인가요? 네, 어, 잘 먹고 잘 자고 푹 쉬는 게 좋은 비결을 같습니다. Eat well, sleep well, and rest well. That sounds like good advice for basically anybody doing anything, but uh, that, that definitely works for Hearthstone too. So we're watching this match right now. Naviud is up 2-0. Are you getting worried? Would you rather play Matsun? Who would you rather face in the uh, semifinal match coming up? 지금 나비 선수가 2대0으로 이기고 있는데요. 혹시 원하시는 상대방이 있으신가요? 어, 매튠 선수가 올라왔으면 좋겠는 게 나비우트 선수가 캐잔을 써가지고 얼버비 캐잔을 맞을까 걱정이 되는데 뭐 그래도 두 선수 중 누가 올라와도 이길 자신 있으니까 상관 크게 상관 없습니다. 네. He would rather have Matun going up top and facing him because Nabiu has Kazan and his freeze mage is a little bit weaker to his warrior. All right. Is there any deck in particular that you're really, really uh, afraid of facing this weekend? 이번 그 토너먼트에서 가장 두려운 덱이 혹시 있으신가요? 두려운. 어. 음 아니요 특별히 없어요. 네. No, he doesn't have any specific decks that he's worried about. Okay, nothing. Well, uh, confidence from handsome guy. Let's start back over to Frodan and get going with the next game. Much appreciation, Doa. Uh, game number three is about to begin between Naviut and uh, Matsun. If you guys are just tuning in, not, uh, Matsun has tried and tried, but it seems like he can't really win these really long, drawn-out games, which Naviut has a very good game plan from start to finish. Uh, but it's not over yet. Not, un not unless the fat lady sings, or so the saying goes. <laughs> or the innkeeper sings. I'm not sure how the Hearthstone translation of this. Um, taking a look at the lineup here, I think uh, Matsun is just going to play Warrior against Freeze Mage. And Navi's gonna try to, <laughs> yeah. to, to beat it. <laughs> that seems like the most likely situation here. Maybe Matsun just picks up some confidence. Obviously, that matchup is one that's pretty one sided. So maybe just Matsun just picks up a win here and uh, see if he can get some momentum going. Now, if there's one deck to be afraid, I mean, Handsome Guy says he fears no deck, but I know one deck in the back of my mind whenever I play Freeze Mage it's Control Warrior. <laughs> Absolutely. There's very, there's there, there's there's death, there's taxes, and then there's losing to control warriors <laughs> freeze mage. As far as I'm concerned, certain when life. it comes to Hearthstone <laughs> laws of the universe, right? Absolutely. Well, yeah. we got the hello coming out from Naviut here, and Naviut's plan is pretty simple: just assemble all the damage and throw it at his opponent's face. And Monsoon's just trying to draw that Justa card, which will more or less end the game. <laughs> Yep, and taking a look at how Navu's hand is developing, he's got some reasonable stuff. First of all, he has things to do in the early game, whether it's minions or, or card draw. He also has the coin. The coin is pretty valuable in this matchup, wouldn't you say, D2? It is very valuable. You can turn it into Fireball, though we think that this is the the Torch Mage and not the Antonidas Mage. But uh, looks like he's not going to use the coin quite yet. I was thinking maybe he could go for the Acolyte of Pain there, but maybe mm -hmm. a bit worried about that Fire War X. Yeah, I think th having the coin means that he can hit his uh, threats a little bit earlier. Even right. though he doesn't have the Antonidas, he can play Thorson on five, uh, which means he can surprise his opponent, where Matsun's been having some awkward draws with some of those things. Acolyte of Pain also allows Navi to draw a little bit here. Do you like Acolyte or do you like uh, Arcane Intellect? What's like the pros and cons? Well, for Arcane Intellect, you're not developing anything out of the board. By playing the Acolyte, you're kind of forcing Matsun to deal with it. So maybe Matsun does something that he wouldn't have normally done if he just played the, the Arcane Intellect and sat back. And looks like he's going to... Huh. He's going to ping his own Mad Scientist. What is the sequencing here? If he kills off his Mad Scientist, it dies first and he gets the secret first, right? Uh, the yes. Yeah. Assuming that Pretty is sure. the case. I think Navi was considering pinging because it might huh. feel like it's more efficient because he doesn't want to utilize his mana. Well, so he, he wants to he wants to make sure to control the board but so that he can't get benefit off of it. But. So we just saw the card come first and then the secret come on, so Navi definitely experienced in this in this particular situation. Yep. That is a uh, as in uh, interaction I was not aware of, I have to admit. I think it's the death rattle sequencing. Um, 
the fact that Mad Scientist was played first. Oh, sorry, uh, Unstable Ghoul was played Goal. first. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then Mad okay, Scientist was go. played second. So he's worried that the Unstable Ghoul will kill, uh, would make him draw, and then draw the secret that he would get anyways. Right. Well, this is an interesting play from Monsoon, or CV from Navi. We're going to go with the kind of tempo doomsayer. And what this does is maybe Monsoon goes for the attack with his Despite to draw another card before, you know, his Acolyte dies. And that rids uh, Monsoon of the Despite to be able to kill Thoris and potentially the next turn. Sure. Force out removal. And also, by the way, if you can't remove it or chooses not to, you can still coin into Thorson. Exactly. And so Monsoon is going to just go use his bash there. I mean, not too many uses for bash. Sometimes he has just bash the face just to get that extra armor anyway. He has those shield blocks in hand, has the Justicar as well, and has that execute. Well, this is kind of hilarious. Remember this moment where Freeze Mage has more armor than the Control Warrior. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think you see that every day. Not every day, but I don't think it's going to last too long here. Yeah, just even for a moment, right? Matsun has a lot of ways to deal with it. Normally, this is the turn you want to play Justicar, Car, but I would definitely prioritize removing the Emperor Thoris in here. You can get away by using Execute as well. You don't have to use Death Bite number two because I don't think you want to take that damage. Right, I think Monsoon wants to draw as much as possible just in case he needs to take out something like an Alexstrasza later on. Sure. So he's just basically, you know, he's basically just making sure he draws as much as possible, except for the armor up at the end. He wants to get the armor up. Navi, already aiming to draw, playing extremely quickly. I think it's huh. getting to the point where he's just trying to conserve, you know, his, his mental energy right here. This, right. The fact is this matchup is extremely difficult, so it's worth trying. You don't want to concede immediately, because even if there's a 5% chance, you want to try it. Yeah, absolutely. Compared to 0% chance. Mm -hmm. And but, things aren't too bad just yet for Navi. He hasn't seen a Justicar. car. In his mind, he's thinking, maybe if I just, you know, pick up enough damage, I can kill him. And, I mean, you saw the, the draw cards into the ping, realized he wasn't going to overdraw, and he wasn't going to use any burn right now. You might as well just use your hero power to, get, to uh, maximize the damage over time. Sure. Plays the Elite Star Seeker. And this Elise isn't... It's basically just to get a minion on the board. He's not really worried about the map at all or the monkey. He's just getting a minion on board and fitting that hero power as well. Next turn, he can either go with the shield minion, more likely the Justicar, though. I'm also okay with playing Justicar the previous turn, because even if you get the armor up one time, it makes up the difference that you would have not gotten last turn. Well, he's getting the tank up now, so he's actually getting two more over the course of these two turns. Right, so, so I'm saying... No, okay, so if he... Yeah, yeah, you're, I'm saying the fact that you can yeah. still play Justicar because it's a stronger minion mm. and oh. do it. <laughs> Navi just concedes. Wow, okay, <laughs> there we go. No reason to draw it out. He knew it was basically over by that point. Already 18 armor on the side of Matsu, and it's just going to grow from there. Navi didn't have enough damage to kill him, so he just concedes. Honestly, that was basically the right move right there. He had less than a 1% chance to win. Might as well just, you know, conserve energy. All right, well, we're just moving on with that. And it doesn't really matter if Naviut is dropping that game. He's still up 2-1. Do you I think that Naviut's looking toward the, looking, you know, in the long run? Because he is up 2-1. Maybe he needs to, maybe he wants to win this whole thing. That's the goal of everyone here. He wants to win the championship, wants to go to BlizzCon. If he can, if he conserves energy right now, then maybe it'll help him in the future. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of important, like, if, if you're in Matsun's position to try and win back something, I think, you know, to lose 0-3 does feel pretty bad. And, you know, statistically, if you try to increase your chances of, of winning, uh, you want to play your best first, even though ultimately it, it, you, people had this idea of it doesn't matter, right? You just try to win the series no matter what, so you have to play any deck. Well, I'm mean, talking from Navio's position right here. I mean, basically, oh, sorry, he, I thought you were talking from Matsun's position. Yeah, so for Navio, he basically immediately conceded there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for some people, it's like you have to play it out, you know, just until you lose, until it's 100% mm -hmm. over. But maybe Navio's looking toward the championship, and so that's why he conceded right away. Uh, yeah, he has to play three series today if he wants to go the distance. So I, I'm not opposed to that. It's a very difficult matchup. But ultimately, maybe one that he feels like he's just better off not tiring himself out. I don't mind it at all. Yep, so that means we're going to the next game. Let's see what Monsoon picks between the Malagos Warlock or the Murloc Paladin to go against that Freeze Mage. Needs to win with both of them anyway. Let's see what he goes with right now. Is going to be the uh -huh. Murloc Paladin with double shield and minibot, actually. Uh, yeah, we saw the two minibots in the first game against the Warrior. Uh, however, what, one thing that is surprising is the inclusion of Lotheb into this deck. 
And, you know, the load that ends up being conveniently powerful against Freeze Mage, even against <laughs> other Murloc Balance right Conveniently powerful. I think it was actually a tech <laughs> to be able to go against Freeze Mage. But, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. I think it's one of those things where you have to be considering, like, you know, if you're going to be banning Druid, what else can you be weak against? I can be weak against Freeze Mage. Yeah, absolutely. I can be weak against other decks. Oh, wow. That is the awesome largest here. novice engine you've ever seen. Just for one day, she wants to remember what it's like <laughs> to be a 1-2 again. <laughs> I remember those days. And it looks like we have a bit of a spectator bug here with Matsun. He played out that second Shielded Minibot because he is at 0 out of 2 mana here. And the mm -hmm. Shielded Minibot is out of his hand. So we can uh, clear that up. It's fine uh, th that Navi knows that there's some board oh, there pressure coming in here. Uh, the fact is N Matsun can't really answer this Doomsayer without a quality. So Navi would saying you don't really keep a quality in your hand. Yep. Usually you go for early curve. I'm gonna really benefit off of this. And, and that's a really good call, because now Matsun has to pass. It shows the experience of Navi playing this freeze mage deck. He plays it a lot. He basically got to oh, number two wonder. on the NA ladder, finished number two, I should say, by using this freeze mage deck. So knows all of the matchups, even the matchup against the Murloc Paladin. And yeah, he's just gonna wipe this board of annoying minions that I mean these no minions, these so the minibots are usually so annoying for Freeze Mage to deal with, and he just goes, okay, Doom's there. I like that uh, Navi chose to play the Ice Barrier instead of the Acolyte of Pain, going for the guaranteed draw. His hand's looking a little bit awkward. And here's another question. Would you drop Emperor Thorson with a weak hand like this? I know some Freeze Mages really like getting as best of an Emperor hand as possible to kill Murloc Paladin in Burst, as opposed to the usual Alex Straza, and then over two turns burn the opponent down if, if you have the burn. I think Navi is going to go with the. He's going to you know make that decision on the spot. He hasn't really decided whether he's going to do it or not. And the reason is because if you're able to grab a lot of utility with his hand by playing the Emperor, and maybe you kind of flip the game, make a tempo play that turn, then that's who he'll go for. But otherwise, like you mentioned, he might just wait for you know all the pieces to come together first. Well, if he does have two pieces which are excellent to reduce. An Ice Dance and a Frostbolt is phenomenal to squeeze in more burst. Especially when you count the fact that Roaring Torch will only be three mana. That makes you that make, let you squeeze another Fireball with an Ice Lance, which is really strong. Um, so we'll see. I mean, he also is probably going to draw another card here before he plays Emperor Thorson. Matsun's at a, at, a, at a position where he can choose to also develop, uh, or he can also try to draw some cards. Mm. Yeah, at the moment, Matsun, he could go for the True Silver to deny his opponent card draw, or he can make it so that his drawing is a bit more, a bit easier to do, right? He could throw two of these Silver Henry Coots into the Acolyte. He gives opponent, you know, a couple of card draws, but, you know, sort of playing that True Silver, you're not really denying the card draw anyway. Then you can play double Solemn Vigil right now. You can also play the Murloc mm. to, to kill, develop a board slightly. Right. He didn't play the old Murakai last turn, so I wonder if he wants to play both Murlocs on turn seven, potentially. But uh, he could okay. just go for the Morlock and Hero Power as well. But looks like he is going for that Solemn Vigil, saying that, you know what, I might as well just uh, go for it right now. And it's actually going to be three mana, so he can't play both. Yeah, so he chooses instead to only use one. I think he's afraid of maybe drawing too many cards. But I feel like that would still be an okay position. He'd only have, he'd only have eight cards at the end of his turn. And Lay on Hands is still far away, so mm -hmm. I mean, maybe Matsun in the situation is also like, I want to keep a reasonable amount of board pressure. Navi has a decent hand again to, to reduce, but it's one of those questions. I can also just spend a turn drawing. I can play like Acolyte, I can play Mad Scientist. All right, looks like he's going to develop the Mad Scientist and instead try to see if he can build up his armor count early to prevent Matsun from being able to rush him down. Yeah, if you play the Acolyte here, there was a chance that Matsun went for the play of making Naviud overdraw, and maybe Naviud could have overdrawn something really, really important to him, like an Alexstrasza, for instance. Sure. Uh, not to mention that uh, if you get the secrets out first, then you have less chance of drawing the secrets, which every Freeze Mage uh, wakes up in the middle of the night. <laughs> they hate doing that. They they love having the you know secret coming out of that Mad Scientist, and there we go. We have the Ice Block coming out from that Mad Scientist. And Solemn Vigil looks like it's going to be the play once more. We'll see if Navi, or excuse me, Matsun commits to that war leader right now. The well, he's got to get working on the ice block or ice barrier eventually. 
I mean, the thing is, Motsun on turn 9 could actually burst his opponent for 9 damage with just, uh, you know, the Murlocs in his hand. And then followed up by an Anything Can Happen. He has 3 Murlocs, though. Uh, it's not exactly the most imposing <laughs> board at all. Sometimes you, got, you just gotta have to get the damage in, though, instead of, you know, waiting for every single piece of the combo. Okay, that's pretty, pretty fair. I do like this approach that Navi is going for, too, of making sure that he can have a better Emperor Thoris in hand. Maybe he even feels... How many cards does he have? One, two, three, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So if he ends up drawing all of the Acolyte, he'll be at, he'll be overdrawing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, he'll get the Acolyte out of his hand, and then he can draw potentially three out of it, and then he'll draw the next card the following turn. So if Monsoon wants to make him overdraw, he could. And it wouldn't honestly be too that, too that hard for Monson to do so. Usually, you know, when in making your opponent overdraw involves using two cards of your own, that's not really something you want to go for. But in this instance, I don't think Monson would be too opposed to getting rid of a couple 1-1s one just to make him overdraw. Now, if you at an important crossroads here, does he want to go for the Emperor Thorson? Does he feel like this is good enough? Does he want to use Acolyte and dump a card? Both ways. Does he get a rid of a card in his hand with Acolyte so that way he has a better chance of getting value off of it? Or, so he wanted to just toss a Blizzard, which doesn't feel like a very strong play. This is really tough. And one thing to keep in mind is Navi knows that Lothab is in the deck of Monsoon, so at any point, his plans could be foiled. That's a really good point, which means that he might have Emperor Thorson played right now, so that way he can have his spells reduced and be able to answer uh, a Lothab board. If Matsun overextends, I mean, there are such things as having too many 1-1 one -one tokens and anything, pal anything can happen <laughs> yeah, won't definitely. actually do much. Very similar to how sometimes Druid can't use Force of Nature at all because <laughs> their board's too full. Well, Paladin knows all about having too full of a board against Freeze Mage, and obviously Murloc Paladin is no exception at all. Looks like we're going to see the Warrior come out and the Old Murakai to take out this Thorison, maybe. Unless he goes with the other, two min other three minutes on the board. I don't mind uh, cashing in the small tokens here. Right. These, these are much harder for the Freeze Mage to deal with. And, you know, if your opponent's using a Fireball on your Omurakai, then that's less damage going to your face. All right. Navi, you're going to draw more cards. I wonder if he does feel like he needs to start removing, though. Oh, man. Thanos means a lot of yeah, damage. Absolutely. I bet Navi wishes that we're one mana, though, right now. I mean, he reduced three cards as well, so mm. that, that would be used with the Thanos. So right now, that would cost six total, allowing him to get another Fireball, uh, even an Ice Lance and a Roaring Torch. Definitely true. Which means it's 20, is that 23 damage, if I count correctly? I'll leave the cast math to you, Thor. <laughs> no, if he gets another Ice Lance, that'd be 20, 28 damage. Wow. <laughs> With a Thanos. Wow. <laughs> Which is insane. That is pretty insane. He could kill him right now. All right, so Monsoon's just going to go ahead and make his board even stronger, even more Murlocs coming onto the board. OK, that's a lot of pressure. That is a Warlock wow. Fireball. You know, <laughs> I, I always thought that Fireball for four mana was pretty insane. <laughs> but it turns out that Fireball for zero is a really awesome Warlock class card. We did, just kidding, guys. It's just another Fireball. Nothing to do, uh, to wig out too much. Uh, you know, Navi Ute, once again, just going to clear these board, this, this board. And it's a turn before anything can happen, which is pretty important. He really needs to figure out if he can get Alex Draza. And if he can't, does he end up just going for a Pirate Blast to the face? That might end up being a key play. Because how much damage does he have right now? He has a Fireball for four. Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Fireball. Well, for now, it's in Monsoon's turn, and I wonder if he goes for the Tempo Lay on Hands play again, because that's what he did against Navi mm. when this matchup came up earlier, or came up a couple days ago. But now Monsoon's hand's much better than it was at that moment. So if Monsoon goes for Lay on Hands right now, he might regret it later. Huh. OK, I'm doing some quick math here. So the Navi has 23 damage with uh, Blood Mage, Thanos, two Blood Fireballs, Frostbolt, Ice Lance. Hmm. If Matsun, if he if he Pyroblasts the face, Matsun will still be able to heal outside that range. Oh, he's going for it. Uh, but, he, but he has a second lay on hands. He does have a second lay on hands. So I think he's still OK. And oh, there's the Lothib. Lothib is pretty huge. And he picks up that War Leader as well. 
He's going to Pyroblast and says, if you can't really answer it, then I'm going to win. But Monson is almost certainly going to play either Lotheb here. Um, yeah, Lotheb, War Leader, and maybe a Zombie Chow just to get cards out of his hand. Maybe even the, yeah. Maybe, no, I, don't, I don't know about Zombie Chow. It feels really scary because it, it might heal your opponent slightly <laughs> outside that range. You never know. Right. I think we're going to see an attack with the Chew Silver, though, almost certainly, oh, just wonder. to start gaining that health back. Yeah, I would love that attack with the Chew Silver. The well, anything can happen here still isn't really that much damage either. It's nine damage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe ten, actually, because the, the Murloc uh, War... Uh, Merc Eye gets uh, plus four because it's plus two plus the other two Murlocs. So it's it's ten, I think. But um, Lotheb still seems the better play here. You don't really want to do that ten damage. Right. I mean, you're not really you're not killing him, so or not popping the ice block, so mm -hmm. no real point. Well, uh, Monson's under a lot of stress. I don't blame him. This is elimination game again. Yeah. These <laughs> decisions here could be right. you know the difference between going home or not. He's going to go with that War Leader. And maybe not even hero power because he needs the room on the board. Oh, gonna go to hero power. Okay. okay. Here's the reality too. Now if you can stall for two turns. Oh my God, Alex Straza. Wow. Do you? I mean, basically you just do, right? Uh, he knows that his opponent can heal with True Silver Champion, and if he has one heal bot, if he has one heal bot, he's still out of range because he has 23. So he can also slow play it. Play the. The novice engineer in Frost Nova. He can, and he, but then he, he's opening himself up to an anything can happen, ice block pop. So I think Alex Straza might just be better. Well, how many Murlocs have died? Only one War Leader and one Blue Gill Warrior, right? So, but plus True Silver Champion hit, right? So that would be ten damage. <laughs> Uh, anything <laughs> can happen is 10 damage, you're right. So he's actually safe, I think. He's gonna go for the ping. Yeah, so... Oh, okay, so he's saying if you go up to 23 and attack with Chew Silver, I kill you anyways. I like this setup. This is really meticulous. And if Matsun doesn't lay on hands... Oh, man. He loses? Is Am I reading this correctly, D2? 7, 14, 18, 23. It's enough damage, enough and, mana and as well. Well, he has to, he, he still can play around if right. he plays a lay on hands on his own face. And I, I think Mazu knows this. He's like, ah, do I really want to do this? I mean, he can pop the block right now, can't he? Or no, he can't because his uh, Murkai didn't. His Murkai didn't die. So... Right, so he gets a War Leader and a Bluegill back, meaning Bluegill's at 6 attack, and then he's That's got 10, two yeah. Sword, he's got 10 damage. Oh my god. So Monson has the Lay on Hands himself, but this is a very and hard play to make. And then there's Alex Straza. And then there's Alex Straza. This is exactly the play that Naviut made against the Reno Lock. Just saying, you know, use your heal now. Use your heal now, then I'll look to you. He's doing it. Monson makes the correct play, but Naviut drawing Alex Straza has made all the difference for our Australian player, not to mention, by the way, he's There's forced the to play though. Zombie Chows. Oh, heal bot. There's the heal bot, though, and another True Silver. That is 28 damage. <laughs> well, he can't play the Fireball. We were talking about oh, the you're right, right, we're the talking Roaring about Torch. Roaring Torch, yeah. you're correct. Ah, I think you're Alex Straza here for sure, then. Navi just really making sure to calculate it. And Matson is not happy to see it. Does he come into the Ice Lens? Nope. Because now he has an Ice Lance, which extends his range a little bit further. All right, a lot of decisions, decisions to be made here for Matsun. He can pop the block and yes. play his heal bot, but, you know, after popping the block, his zombie child is still there on the field for Navi to get back up in health, which is definitely problematic. I think he kills off his, his Murlocs here, though, because he wants to be able to play any Finn. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, I think he gets rid of as much of his board as possible just so he can fill the board, or get the board back for his anything can happen. So he, I, I think he's going to throw his recruit into the Alexstrasza as well, even though it's overkill on the Alexstrasza. Uh, yeah, that's actually a really good point, an observation. I like that. The Silverhand recruit's not going to be doing much. Wait, can he throw the Zombie Chow in and still get... I don't think he can. I don't think he can do uh, both. You're healing for no, 10? But, no, what if he plays the, the Bluegill, and that allows him to kill it, and then he can heal... 
Okay, okay, so he does he does attack with the Silver and Recruit. I think this might have been a bit iffy. He's gonna throw away the Zombie Chow. Alright. I think it's okay, because he knows he has the any fence. He needs to play this heal bot, though, for sure. Yeah, okay, this is what he wanted to do. He wanted to play the True Silver for the extra healing, because he knows he wants to play any fence in Abbott next mm -hmm. turn. But, I mean, Naviute has the essential checkmate. I mean, even if he didn't have enough damage, he still had the Ice Block. He's gonna count it one more time. Well, he doesn't have enough damage right now. He has 23, remember? Right, right. But he's got the ice block. Right. So he can ice block, fireball, ping the face. Or he can even uh, ice block Thanos and then freeze the face a bunch and then prepare for the fireballs the following turn. Right. Freezing the face is absolutely critical here. So, yeah, basically, I mean... Ice block is ha going to happen. Freeze is going to happen. Freeze only costs one mana anyway, but you do want to get your ice lance damage out right now while you can. Mm. So basically, I'm looking at basically uh, the ice block into the blood mage into frostbolt ice lance ice lance. That's only six mana, which is pretty nice. Yeah. And you then you can actually just fireball. Huh. All right. Well, he's 22 damage, even without that fireball. So. He's going to use both, okay. Well, this looks like it's over unless Monsoon has another heal bot that we do not know about. I am a little surprised why he didn't freeze, but I think... Uh, he has a lot of damage. Yeah, he still has a lot of damage, and the quality is not going to be it here. So we do see that Monsoon making the final attacks, trying to survive. That should be it. That, yeah, definitely is going to be it. Well... Well, Way more than enough damage here from Nabiut. All right. Well, Nabiut. Or actually, exact damage. What am I talking about? There's a Forgotten Torch just in case. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he calculated just in case. He knew it. But uh, it's just nice to have that insurance anyways. <laughs> we have ourselves the top four secured. One of them being Naviut from Australia, taking the series by a score of 3-1. to one. Well played by Naviut. Really good game plan from him. Changing it up from the first time he played against Matsu and able to take it. You can see the relief on his face. Unfortunately for Matsu, he is going to go home, having been eliminated in groups. But you know what? Uh, placing fifth in your entire region is certainly a noteworthy achievement and a job well done. Uh, Matsu definitely had some rocky moments getting to this point, but the, the reality is he made a much better showing than a lot of people anticipated. And I, I definitely consider Japan on the map now. Yeah, I would say so too. There's a lot of players that, I mean, he wasn't really someone that people thought were going to get out of Japan in the first place. So it just goes to show the strength of the region right now. I'm looking forward to great things from there. But again, congratulations, Navi. He's moving on to the semifinals. Absolutely. So we have our top four settled. And our re most recent winner is waiting with Doa over at the fireside with a few words with Navi. Hey guys, yep, I'm here with Naviut. You uh, won the match. That means you have a winning record in the tournament now. Good job. How's it feel? Yeah, um, feels great to go 2-1, uh, so yeah, going out 1-2 would be kind of disappointing, but um, yeah, I think uh, I had to get pretty lucky against Matsun with his lineup, and uh, like he rolled low in his anything, and then uh, I had the early Draxus in the Warrior Mirror, and then I think my play got a little bit sloppy towards the end of that game, like in terms of like maybe like going for a Nova as opposed to Alex when his board's full, but yeah, I just got to kind of forget about that and move on. So you kind of answered my second question already. I was going to say, we talked yesterday and you said, oh, well, my lineup isn't very good compared to what Matsun has. I don't know if I can beat him. But then it, it kind of turned around today. You were able to actually do it. But you kind of already answered that question. I was going to ask how. But now I'll, I'll just move on. I'll ask a question about the Freeze Mage game then. Because that was one where it really kind of went back and forth throughout the course of it. When was the moment where you really knew you won that game? Uh, just sort of getting towards, uh, like, when I start, sort of started seeing the burn spells line up, uh, you know, that you obviously start feeling pretty good then. And all, but also, uh, he wasn't able to pressure me very early. Like, at first set, he had, like, both war leaders opener. So that's that's really hard. And I didn't have, like, a Nova or a Doom. And then he had, uh, like, an on-curve low third, which stopped my Nova. So, you know, that pretty much sealed the deal for him in that last set. But uh, his low that wasn't as effective this time. And, you know, I had the freezes, so. All right, so that worked. So you're going to go on to face handsome guys. So I have to ask, you know, what, what do you think your chances are? You've sold yourself short before, so just be honest this time. What do you really think? Sure. Um, yeah, well, this bracket, my side of the bracket was pretty tough, but uh, I feel pretty confident going up against Handsome Guy, especially because he's bringing the uh, Page Moria and uh, the Zulok, and also, like, Banning Drill, which is kind of my strat, like, lines up pretty well against his decks for me. So, yeah, I'm actually feeling pretty confident. All right, cool stuff. Well, there we are. Naviu taking the win. Let's send over to TJ Papa Smithy, who are standing by to break down this match.
Thank you very much, Doa, and a big congratulations to Navi Ute for securing his spot in the round of four. I'm joined on the sidebar by Brian Kibler and Papa Smithy, and uh, we're going to get right into it. I, I want to talk a little bit about Murloc Paladin. Uh, it's a deck that a lot of players, uh, I think all the Paladins that are here are Murloc Paladin. Um, uh, Papa Smithy, what do, you, what do you think of this deck, and why do you think, was it a smart choice to bring this deck? I think it comes back to what we were talking about in the previous series, when the big comment was... UCCU bringing Aggro Shaman. We said, okay, if you've done your research, expecting it to be a control meta, control Warlocks, control Warriors, don't know about the Aggro Shaman. The flip side of it is the Murloc Paladin, which has been built up as this deck that does super well against the likes of the control Warrior and just the control lineup. So if we're going to point our fingers at the bringing of Aggro Shaman, you kind of have to applaud the bringing of the Murloc Paladin, because at least on paper, the performance, maybe we'll get into that, hasn't quite been there, but at least on paper, it seems a very astute uh, bring, just based on the field you're expecting to face with these eight players. Yeah, so Kibler, we, we can talk about the performance now. Murloc Paladin struggled, and one of the matchups that struggled the most in is the Control Warrior matchup, which a lot of players coming into this tournament were saying was a good one for it. Why, why do you think this is? Well, I think we've seen uh, players really realize that there is a way that you can win this matchup. Mm -hmm. We saw the, the players focusing on, okay, I'm going to preserve this armor total as much as I can. I'm going to try and build up to the late game and just get those brawls in my hand, get those sludge belches in my hand, and just weather the storm. Actually kill all the Murlocs once, kill them again, and just hope you have enough armor to actually survive all of it. All right, well, we actually do have a, a clip here from game number one, which sort of showcases um, a specific play, but also the general strategy of the Control Warrior in this matchup. So, uh, Kibba, we're going to come back to you, uh, since you were just uh, speaking of this type of strategy. Uh, wa walk us through uh, this play here from from Mattoon. Well, Naviut has, has really set this up to try and build this giant armor total. He has both brawls in his hand, so Mattoon is almost out of cards. His last card is that old Merc guy, and... Naviut has the brawls, has the sludge belcher. He's just sitting back to try and to try and deal with this. But Mattoon makes what I think is a, a pretty severe misstep this turn. He is out of cards, has two anything can happen, and he chooses to play sludge belcher. The problem with this is that he actually leaves himself with too many minions in the board in order to get maximum value out of anything can happen. Naviut will remove this sludge belcher, but the slime remains. And that only allows three new Murlocs to actually be summoned on the board. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't get the maximum value out of the uh, anything can happen. And that leads to him just not having enough damage to punch through all of Naviut's armor. So, Papa Sminti, do you think, uh, what was going through his head here? Do you think he was trying, uh, using it as pressure, saying, well, I'm probably not going to get used out of this sludge belcher. I want to try and put a little bit of pressure on before I make this anything can happen. What, what was going through Mattoon's head here with this belcher play? I mean, to some degree, I follow your logic, just because he made the first initial plays very fast. He realized the moment that he had the clear onto the, the Death Lord that his last minion in his deck, the one he was guaranteed to pull, was the, the final Merlock, right? The mm. old Merc Eye. So he tried to push the damage. He realized he had mana to fit in the Sludge Belcher. But as Kibler was saying, only 15 damage from the first anything. You know, we always talk about how big the damage output is from the second, but the first one, it's usually over 20. It's usually the 22 value. Only 15 meant that the last, uh, the last combo wasn't high enough and didn't have the damage. Yeah, so a couple takeaways from that one is uh, Merlock Paladin, a good bring to this tournament, but players are starting to figure out uh, ways to beat it. So thank you guys very much for your expert analysis. Uh, we are going to jump into the first semi-final of the day. It is going to be Pinping Ho versus Dione. Before we do that, let's take a look at some of those highlights from the last match. <laughs> 